Imagine you have a collection of 100 balls, where n of them are red and rest are green. The value of n is chosen uniformly at random from 0 to 100, meaning all the values of n are equally likely. Now, you pick one ball at random, without looking, and found out that it's red. You discard it, and you pick another ball from the remaining 99 balls. Now the question is, is the second ball more likely to be red or more likely to be green? Or are both outcomes equally likely? This intriguing probability puzzle posed by Daniel Litt on his X account, which attracted the attention of more than 22,000 people. Surprisingly, only 22.6% of them arrived at the correct answer, which is the second ball is more likely to be red. This problem seems a bit counterintuitive at first. However, if you look at the first draw, which is a red ball, then the problem is depicting that the set of balls is more likely to contain a higher number of red balls. Hmm, to better understand this, I am going to simulate this experiment. I arranged a total of 101 sets of balls, each containing a varying number of red balls, where n sequentially ranges from n equals to 0 to 100. Out of these sets, 50 sets are those which have more red balls than the blue ones, and 50 have the more blue balls than the red ones, and there is one set which has equal number of both blue and red balls. Let's randomly pick one ball from each set. You see, after this selection, in 52 sets, the ball drawn is red, and out of these highlighted 52 sets, 38 are those sets where the number of red balls is in majority. Although there are few sets where the red balls are in minority, so generally when I pick another ball from the highlighted sets, it is obviously more likely to be red rather than the blue one. The overall probability of drawing a red ball on the second draw, given that the first one was red, comes out to be approximately 0.71. Initially, I thought that this outcome might be due to the fact that n was sequential. So to test this further, I ran a second trial where I randomized the value of n for 101 sets. And I found out that I still get more number of sets where red balls were in majority. Hmm. To rule out the possibility that these results might be a coincidence, I simulated 1000 such trials. In each trial, I randomized 100 sets of 100 balls each and calculated the probability of drawing a second red ball given that the first one was red. And in all of these trials, as you can see, I got the mean probability of 0.67, where the minimum and maximum probabilities quite differ from each other. Alright, I understand that the probability is 2 by 3, or 0.67. Yet, I still want to develop a deeper intuition for why this is the case. Why 2 by 3? So, let's do some math. But before we get our hands dirty, let's quickly revise conditional probability. Suppose we have two events, A and B, which may or may not be independent of each other. The probability of occurring of event A, given that event B has already occurred, can be calculated by using the probability of A and B divided by the probability of B. And for our little experiment, we need to find the value of this fraction. Let's start simple, with n equals to 2 balls. In this case, n can take 3 values, 0, 1 or 2. The corresponding sample space is BB, RB or R. Now, the probability of selecting any of the samples or the set is equally likely, which is 1 by 3 here. Now, the probability of drawing a red ball depends on the number of red balls in the set. So, the probability of drawing the first red ball from all of the samples can be calculated by adding all the probabilities of drawing a red ball from each sample. And then, we multiply the probability of selecting that sample. For instance, in the first sample, there are no red balls, so the probability of drawing a red ball is zero. In the second case, there is only one red ball out of the two balls, so the probability is 1 by 2. In the same way, the probability of drawing a red ball from the third sample is 1. We then multiply the probability of selecting each sample, which is 1 by 3, by the probability of drawing a red ball from that sample. Now, after the first draw, we can totally ignore the contribution from the first sample. 
right and then adding all of them we get the total probability p of r1 equals to 1 by 2 the probability of drawing another red ball can be calculated in the same way we multiply the probability of finding two red balls from a sample without replacement with the probability of selecting that sample and then after adding up all the probabilities across all the samples we get the total probability p of r1 and r2 to be 1 by 3 so i guess it becomes clear right the probability of drawing a second red ball given the first ball is red is simply 2 by 3 or 0.67 approximately now following this same process for n equals to 3 4 5 we can generalize this for any value of capital n now here we know that the sum of n would be n and plus 1 by 2 hence the probability of p of r1 is half we need to find the probability of second ball to be red now after calculating the summation of n square minus n we will find the probability p of r1 and r2 to be 1 by 3 so i think it's clear that the second ball is more likely to be red than the green one or in this case the blue one 